Hello, and welcome to the Texas VFW social networking class. So to start off, let me introduce myself. I'm Erin Marlowe. I am your department communications chair. In a nutshell, this is how I serve the department of Texas VFW. I work as the social media manager. So you know the department's Facebook page? Yes, I take care of that. I bet you didn't know the Texas VFW department also has a Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube account. Well, hopefully by the end of today's class, you will know how to connect with your state headquarters and create social media accounts for your post or district to connect with those around you. Other than social networking, I'm the webmaster for the department's website, Texas VFW. Design the quarterly magazine along with other general designs, record the VPRs, and I am the lead photographer and videographer at the Department of Texas VFW events. So if you have not already seen me walking around taking photos, you will probably notice me now. If you need to contact me for any of these reasons, my email is erin at texasvfw.org. Or you can call me at 512-834-8535 at extension 107. I also served in the U.S. Navy from 2008 to 2013 as a mass communication specialist on USS Bataan and briefly on USS Iwo Jima. So enough about me. Let's take a look at our objectives. Hopefully by the end of this hour and a half class, you will better understand social networking. We will go over the definition of social networking, some examples of social networking, 10 benefits of getting connected, and who exactly is on these social networks. The do's and don'ts, such as what to post, what not to post, how often to post, and how active you need to be on your social network accounts. We will look over the basics of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. This includes the purpose of each platform, how to's, and exactly what is this hashtag thing anyways. So let's get started. Social networking, what is it? It is the use of dedicated websites and applications to interact with other users or to find people with similar interests to oneself. So you're saying that it's a virtual place where my Texas VFW post or district can interact and connect with people who share the same interest as our VFW without even leaving the couch and it's free? Okay, tell me more. Here are some social networking sites. There is everything from Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, to LinkedIn, Pinterest, Behance, and Tumblr. However, today we will only focus on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. The 10 benefits of getting connected. Number one, increase brand recognition. Every opportunity to increase our visibility is valuable. Social media networks are just new channels for Texas VFW's voice and content. This is important because it simultaneously makes the Texas VFW easier and more accessible for members, new members, and supporters. It makes Texas VFW more familiar and recognizable for existing members and supporters. For example, if a frequent Twitter user could hear about Texas VFW for the first time only after stumbling upon it on a newsfeed, or otherwise apathetic member, supporter might Become better acquainted with your brand after seeing your presence on multiple networks. Number two, improve brand loyalty. It is proven that brands who engage on social media channels enjoy higher loyalty from their customers. I will always be a Texas VFW member. Number three, more opportunities to reach new members and build support. Every post you make on social media platform is an opportunity to reach new members and build support. When you build a following, you simultaneously have access to potential new members, recent new members, old members, and new supporters, and you'll be able to interact with them all. Every blog post, image, video, or comment you share is a chance for someone to react, and every reaction could lead to a site visit and eventually a new member. But not every interaction with your brand results in a conversion, but every positive interaction increases the likelihood of an eventual conversion. Opportunity is the first element of any action. Four, 
Higher conversion rates. Social media marketing results in higher conversion rates in a few distinct ways. Perhaps the most significant is its humanization element. The fact that brands become more humanized by interacting on social media channels. Social media is a place where brands can act like people do. And this is important because people like doing business with other people, not with companies. A higher number of social media followers tends to improve trust and credibility to your brand, representing social proof. As such, simply building your audience in social media can improve conversion rates on your existing traffic. Number five, higher brand authority. Interacting with your followers, members, supporters regularly is a show of good faith for other potential new members or supporters. When people go to compliment or brag about product or service, they turn to social media. And when they post something about Texas VFW, whether it be your post or your district, new audience members will want to follow you for updates. The more people that are talking about you on social media, the more valuable and authoritative Texas VFW will seem to new users. Not to mention, if you can interact with major influencers on Twitter or other social networks, your visible authority and reach will skyrocket. Number six, increase inbound traffic. Without social media, your inbound traffic is limited to people already familiar with your brand and individuals searching for keywords you currently rank for. Every social media profile you add is another path leading back to your site. And every piece of content you syndicate on those profiles is another opportunity for a new member or supporter. The more quality content you syndicate on social media, the more inbound traffic you'll generate. And more traffic means more leads and more conversions. Number seven, decreased marketing cost. According to HubSpot, 84% of marketers found that as little as six hours of effort per week was enough to generate increased traffic. If you can lend just one hour a day to developing your content and syndication strategy, you could start seeing the results of your efforts. Number eight, better search engine rankings. Being active on social media could act as a brand signal to search engines that your brand is legitimate, credible, and trustworthy. That means if you rank for a given set of keywords, having a strong social media presence could be almost mandatory. Nine, richer customer experiences. Social media at its core is a communication channel like email or phone calls. And every interaction you have on social media is an opportunity to publicly demonstrate your customer service level and enrich your relationship with your members and supporters. For example, if a member, supporter, or person complains about your post or district on Twitter, you can immediately address the comment, apologize publicly, and take action to make it right. Or if someone compliments your post or district, you can thank them and recommend additional services. It's a personal experience that lets members and supporters know that you care about them. 10. Improved Customer Insights Social media also gives you the opportunity to gain valuable information about your members and supporters and what they are interested in and how they behave via social listening. For example, you can monitor user comments to see what people think of your Texas VFW post or district directly and see which types of content generate the most interest and then produce more of that type of content. These are the benefits of sustaining a long-term social media campaign. But if you're still apprehensive about getting started, consider these points. Your competition is already involved. Your competitors are already involved on social media, which means your potential social media traffic and conversions are being poached. Don't let your competitors reap all the benefits while you stand idly by. 
If somehow your competition is not involved on social media, there's even more of a reason to get started. The field is open. The sooner you start, the sooner you reap the benefits. Social media is all about relationship building, and it tends to grow exponentially as your followers tell their friends and their friends tell their friends and so on. The sooner you start, the sooner you'll be able to start growing that audience. Potential losses are insignificant. Realistically, you don't have anything to lose by getting involved in social media. The amount of time and money it takes to create your profiles and start posting is usually minimal compared to other marketing channels. Just six hours a week or a few hundred dollars is all it takes to establish your presence. Benefits Conclusion The longer you wait, the more you have to lose. Social media marketing, when done right, can lead to more supporters and members, more traffic, and it's here to stay. Now, let's take a look at social media audiences. How many people are on social media? Here's a chart on the monthly users. There are over 200 million monthly users on YouTube. Over 129 million monthly users on Facebook. Over 80 million monthly users on Twitter. And over 400 million monthly users on Instagram. So altogether, if we create a social media account for each of these four platforms, that is over 809 million people that you have free access to to find supporters and new members. Now, let's take a look at the number of people who are on these sites on a daily basis. On YouTube alone, there are 1 billion daily users. On Facebook alone, there are 1 billion daily users. And on Instagram, there are 75 million daily users. The information available for Twitter wasn't available, but even without that information, you now have access to almost 2.75 billion people where you can find potential new supporters and new members. Whoa, that's a lot of people. Social media audiences. Ages, who are on these sites? The percentages I'm about to show are out of the percentage of all online users. It is the percentage of the people who are on the internet all the time to who have only used it once. Please pay attention to which age groups are more prevalent on each social media platform so you can best tailor your posts and tweets to your intended audiences. Facebook. 82% of all 18 to 29 year old online users have a Facebook account. 79% of all 34 to 39 year olds have an account on Facebook. And 56% of all online users who are ages 65 and older have an account on Facebook. So pretty much everyone of every age is on Facebook. You could potentially have access to all of these people. Why not create an account for your post or district and advertise the Texas VFW voice for free? Social media audiences, ages. Who is on Twitter? 37% of all Twitter users are 18 to 29 years old. 25% are ages 30 to 49 and 23% of all internet users are on Twitter. And 20% of the US population are on Twitter. Without these social media sites, how many people are you reaching? Social media audiences, ages, who is on Instagram? 53% of all Instagram users are ages 18 to 29. Now that's over half. 25% of all Instagram users are ages 30 to 49. 11% of all Instagram users are ages 50 to 64. And 6% of all Instagram users are 60 years and older. Social media audiences. Ages. 
who is on YouTube. The largest age group on YouTube are people ages 25 to 34. YouTube also reaches more 18 to 49 year olds than any cable network in the U.S. Since the majority of younger adults are active on social media, it seems if we want to bring in the younger members, social media is not only one way, but it's a great way that we can do it. If you are on this social media train with me, we will continue to the six do's and six don'ts. First, the do's. Do message private matters instead of posting on wall. As much as you may have an exhibitionist tendencies and wants everyone to know your most intimate secrets, others might not share the same inclination. Your friends might not take too kindly when you post what they did last night at your house party or any other stuff which are understood to be kept between your closest friends. The fact is that most of their Facebook friends will hear about it on such a public platform. The walls indeed have ears, especially for the Facebook wall. Best to keep these conversations behind closed doors in Facebook messaging. Do be mindful of what you post. When you have hundreds of friends and acquaintances on Facebook, you have people from all kinds of backgrounds, all with different jobs, beliefs, personalities, etc. Updating your status with a general statement may seem harmless to you, but others may read it in a different light. For example, if you make a remark about how advertisers con unsuspecting consumers into buying something they don't need, what you may not realize is that some of your friends in the advertising industry could see your status in their newsfeed. It's a general statement, but they may think you are targeting them. Of course, it's not going to be any fun if you're going to consider all the possible misinterpretations before you post anything, but just be mindful of it. Do call rather than post personal news. This isn't just Facebook etiquette. It's social etiquette or even common sense. If you need to inform your friends or your family about some important and personal issue, like a death in the family, don't declare it out in the public domain. Facebook is a social networking site. It's supposed to be public. This means that people can know what happened. Do reply to comments, especially if they are questions. You post a status and your friends make comments and like it. I guess the least that you can do is acknowledge them by replying something, especially when they are questions directed at you. I'm not saying you should do it for the sake of doing it, but add on to their comments once in a while. If you ignore them all the time, chances are that they won't bother you about your status anymore, lest they look silly talking to a wall. It's also karma. Do avoid posting comments on every post. If you're stalking your friend, leave it at that. Don't make it a habit to make some comment on everything your friend posts, or they'll start to get suspicious. Even if you say with all honesty that you are not stalking them, it's not going to be easy for them to believe that their status updates always appear on your newsfeed. It's open secret that everyone checks out their friend's profile every now and then, but to comment on everything is to admit that you are constantly checking out on them. What is even worse is that your friend's friend might notice as well, seeing that you are a regular commenter. If you don't wish to be labeled a pest, try to limit your comments somewhat. Do be careful of your tone. As with all other online communication, communicating on Facebook is mostly textual. We can either hear the voice tone or see the body language when the other person speaks. In other words, it's easy for someone to think that you're being sarcastic when you are indeed not, or misunderstand you in any other manner for that matter. To complicate things, everyone has their own typing style. One way we can compensate for the lack of hues is to use emoticons. It's pretty limited, but experience has taught me that simply putting a smiley face after a sentence can do wonders by neutralizing any potential tension. Smile and the whole world smiles with you. Now for the don'ts. Do not make friend requests to strangers. The idea becomes warped when people add friends merely for the sake of boosting their popularity indicator among their peers. That's not cool. 
but if you wish to add someone for some valid reason, do so with some introduction or through a mutual friend. Skipping this step only leaves a bad impression of you, which is the last thing any of us wants. Do not tag your friends in unglam shots. Do not tag any photos of your post or post members that shine a negative light on the Texas VFW. Negative photos would include post members drinking alcohol, getting into trouble, acting out of line. The photo portrays the members in an unfavorable manner and other similar negative content. Before tagging a member, ask yourself, does this positively promote the VFW? Do not overshare yourself. Checking out the updates on your newsfeed, you see the same friend updating his status over and over again. Not any insightful ones, but just posts about what he's doing every 10 minutes. You decide to hide his posts. Sounds familiar? Probably. It's annoying because no one is really interested in their friend's everyday mundane activities, yet it's just keep popping up in their updates. Do not vent about your work. Facebook is a double-edged sword when it comes to its social networking capability. The boon is that it enables us to connect in an unprecedented manner with friends of friends of friends through the identification of mutual friends. On the other hand, the bane is that there's easily a way to gather information about you by passing through such layer one by one. Even with your most strict privacy settings, there's still a risk that your posts can reach people you wouldn't want it to reach. And your coworkers and your boss are the last people you want to mess with. So just play safe and leave your venting to somewhere private. Do not post chain status updates. Remember those chain emails that demand you to forward it to all your friends or you'll die a horrible, horrible death? Well, Facebook has a similar kind of chain, but usually for a good cause. Someone first posts a status update about a social cause, encouraging those to read it, to post it to their status too, so their friends will get to read it and post it as well. This chain thus spread the cause, raising public awareness. The intention here is right, but sometimes too much of a good thing isn't good. When you see your newsfeed updates filled with the same status, you get annoyed instead, and you associate your negative emotion to the social cause. Do not flame others. Everyone is entitled to state his or her own opinion on the free internet. So there's no need to put anyone down just because you disagree or worse, don't like the person. Sometimes I even see people criticizing the comments of their friend's friend who replied to the post, whom they don't even know. It's embarrassing not only to yourself, but to your friend as well. In the spirit of good conversation, let's keep this in mind in whatever communication we have online, in Facebook, forums, email, etc. Don't ruin it for everyone. That concludes the do's and don'ts of posting things on social media. Here are the main purposes of each social media site we are discussing today. The purpose of Facebook. Founded in 2004, Facebook's mission is to give people the power to share and make the world more open and connected. People use Facebook to stay connected with friends and family, to discover what's going on in the world, and to share and express what matters to them. To connect with potential new members and supporters, and to stay connected with current members and supporters. To share how your post or district supports veterans in their communities, you can set up an event where you invite members and community to join in. You can share job listings and veterans resources or the information on the next job fair that your post or district is involved in. In an effort to positively promote the VFW goals, mission, and voice for and of veterans. The purpose of Twitter to give everyone the power to create and share ideas and information instantly, without barriers. Hashtag, when it comes to social media, the hashtag is used to draw attention, to organize, and to promote. Hashtags got their start in Twitter as a way of making it easier for people to find, follow, and contribute to a conversation. The purpose of Instagram. Instagram is a social networking app, 
made for sharing photos and videos from a smartphone. Similar to Facebook or Twitter, everyone who creates an Instagram account has a profile and a news feed. When you post a photo or video on Instagram, it will be displayed on your profile. Other users who follow you will see your post on their news feed. Likewise, you'll see posts from other users you choose to follow. Pretty straightforward, right? It's like a simplified version of Facebook with an emphasis on mobile use and visual sharing. Just like other social networks, you can interact with other users on Instagram by following them, being followed by them, commenting, liking, tagging, and private messaging. The purpose of YouTube. YouTube is a free video sharing website that makes it easier to watch online videos. You can even create and upload your own videos to share with others. Originally created in 2005, YouTube is now one of the most popular sites on the web, with visitors watching around 6 billion hours of video every month. Now we go with the how-tos. Let's start with Facebook. We will go over how to set up a Facebook account for your post and district, how to add or delete photos, add or change a profile picture, how to make a photo album, how to add a comment, how to send a message, how to use Messenger, how to update a status, how to tag someone or an organization, how to add an event, and how to share a post. Let's make a Facebook account for your district or post. So let's get started. How to create a Facebook page for your post or district. Go to an internet browser and type in facebook.com. There is one thing I want to make clear before we begin. You must have a personal account to create a company page. A personal account is for your personal business. The company page is for your post or district. Some people may ask if your personal information can get stolen on your post or district page. The answer is no, it cannot. So what if you do not have a personal page? Well, it is time to create one. So let's get back to creating a personal account first and then a post and district page. On your browser window, after you've typed in facebook.com, you should see the words create a new account in big black letters. It is free to sign up and always will be. In the spaces provided, type in your information. Start with your first name and continue to choose your gender and then select the create action button. A message will pop up saying, confirm your email. To continue using Facebook, you will need to confirm your email. So go to your email that you used to sign up on. Open the email from Facebook and click the confirm account button or copy and paste the code into your Facebook window. Then you can choose to find friends that are in your email to grow your friend base. But for now, I will hit the next button. In your own time, you may click the Find Your Friends button, but for this training, I will select the Skip Step button. Now you have a personal account on Facebook. You can customize it later with a profile photo, cover photo, and what settings you prefer later. I will show you all of that fun stuff when we create a post or district page, and you can apply it to your personal account later. So let's continue to build a Facebook page for our post or district. In the top right hand corner, there is a blue down pointing arrow. Go ahead and click that. The first drop down option says create page. Go ahead and click that. A new page will appear and you will see words create a page as the title. For our purposes, select the second option company, organization or institution. Click the choose a category drop down menu. Select nonprofit organization option. Then where it says company name, go ahead and type VFW post and then your post number or Texas VFW district and then your district number. Here's an example, Texas VFW district 11. Then click the get started button. A template Facebook page will come up and now we can start to customize the page to how we want it. Click the camera icon on the square in the upper left hand corner this is where people will see your profile picture. 
Make sure you upload a photo that represents your post or district. A good general photo would be the VFW logo. After you click the camera icon, a drop down menu will appear. Click the upload photo option. Locate and select a profile photo from your files, then click the open button. Now a window pops up where you can crop or edit the photo. Adjust your photo accordingly using the edit button or the crop slider option at the bottom of the photo. When you like what you see, select the save button. Now you can see how your profile photo looks on your page. Now we are going to do the same thing to your cover photo, which is the bigger space at the top middle of your screen. Select the camera icon, select the upload photo option, and locate and choose a photo from your files. You can choose a photo from your post members, click open. You have the option to reposition your photo. You can do this by clicking on the photo and hold the click and drag the image up or down to where you like it best. Then click the save button. Notice under the cover photo, there is a blue button that says add a button. The purpose of this button is to get people to take action on your post or district Facebook page, such as a contact button or learn more button that can take them to your website if your post or district does have your website. Or if your post or district does not have a website, you can link it to the Texas VFW website. So go ahead and click the button and select the learn more option. Add a website, either your poster districts or departments. Click the Add button option. Now test your button to ensure the link is good. To do this, hover your mouse over the Learn More button and then select Test button option. Once you do this, you should be taken to the web page you entered. If it doesn't, go back to your Edit button and check for spelling errors. Go back to your Facebook page. Under your profile photo, it says create page, at username. It is easier for people to find your page in search when it has a unique username. Pages with usernames can create custom URLs that let people quickly visit and message them. Type in a username that reflects your post or district. For example, I am going to type TVFW District 11, no spaces. Click the Create Username button. Now let us add some depth to the page. On the left side, there are some options under the profile photo. Select the About option. This is where you can add information about your post or district. Go ahead and select any option you want to edit or fill out. If you don't know what to put in some of the spots, you can get information from texasvfw.org to copy and paste into the sections, like the mission statement. Now, let's go back to that left side menu. Under the About selection, it says Event. Go ahead and click that. This feature is to let people know what your post or district has coming up. So let's create an event on Facebook. Click the Create Event button. You can click on the Change Event photo to select a photo that best represents the event you're about to have. Just like the profile and cover photos, the same rules apply here. Click the camera icon and locate and select your photo, then click the open button. Now fill out the information in the blank spaces. If you ever have questions to why a piece of information is needed, hover over the gray circle with the eye inside. It'll give you an explanation. Type in an event name, location, and select the date and time. When everything looks correct, select the Publish button. If you realize information is incorrect after you published it, do not fear. In the upper right-hand corner, there is an Edit button. Click that and make your changes. Under your event photos, you have options. There is an Interested button, a Going button, a Share button with a drop-down arrow, and more. The Interested button is selected when you are interested in attending the event but are unsure if you can make it. The Going button, when selected, means you plan on going. If you hover over the Share button, you have different options on how you would like to share the event you just created. Select one of the three options if you are interested in sharing the event. 
Below those buttons, you have your event details and two options. The highlighted option about is further details that you post. If you click on the discussion option, this is where others can ask questions or comment on the event. To go back to your home page, you can click the page link or the dark blue down pointing arrow at the top right hand corner of the page and select your page. Now let's learn how to write a post. Right under your cover photo, it has a little profile photo and it says write something. This is where you can write your post. Notice the tiny profile photo at the right hand side of the box. If you select the drop down arrow, you can choose to write the post under the page's name or your personal account. Select which one you prefer. Click the box and start typing the sentence. After you are finished with writing, you can select Publish to make your sentence live. Or if you would like to add a photo, emoji, or other elements to your post, you can do so by selecting one or more of the options at the bottom of the post box. Then, if everything looks right, you can select the Publish button, or you can select the Publish button's drop-down arrow and choose one of the other options, such as Schedule. This option allows you to make the post today, but have it published and made live and visible on another selected day. In this area, you can upload a video, photo, or photos. If you want to do this, select the option you want to do and locate and select your files. Then click Open, then click a Publish option. Remember, every post that you make will show up on your page's timeline and your followers' home pages. If you do want to delete a post that you've made, you can do this by scrolling down your timeline till you locate your post. Select the drop down arrow within your posts box and click the delete option. Notice that there are other options as well where you can edit the post or pin it to the top of your page. When you write post, the posts categorize themselves in chronological order of the dates of when you posted it. The pin to top option authorizes this post to remain at the top of your post no matter how long ago you've posted it. Now let's customize our settings. In the upper right hand corner, select the word settings. This is where you can control a number of things, such as who can post on your page, if you allow profanity on your page, if you would like to add another admin to the page, and etc. There are too many settings to go over now, but I can cover the important ones. Ensure you are under the general tab located at the left hand side. The first option in this tab is shortcut. Go ahead and select the edit option. If you hover over any question marks, an explanation will appear of what each element is for. Check the pin page to your shortcuts. This allows you to access your page more conveniently. The one below that says visitors post. This is where you can control who publishes or who can add photos to your page. Click the edit button. Enter a check mark in the review post by other people before they are published to your page. This allows you to monitor other people's posts and you choose if you want it on your page or not. Select Save Changes. Edit Tagging Ability. This is where you decide if you want other people to tag your photos and say they are from your post or district. Choose what you prefer, but if you do allow them to tag you, ensure you check each photo you are tagged in so you can determine whether it highlights your post or district in a positive or negative light, and then go from there. Profanity Filter. Edit that and turn that on to Strong. Save the changes. Now on the left side menu, click Page Roles. This is where you can add another page admin or editor to the page to help you maintain it. To add another page role, start typing a name or email in the Assign a New Page Role provided space. Select the page role you want that person to have, then click the Add button. You may add as many people as you see fit, but maybe just a few essential people are best. Now let's talk about notifications. If you see a highlighted red number anywhere on your Facebook page, that means you have a notification. You can click on the red number and it will show you what is new on your page. It could be anything from a new comment on your post, a tag of your page on a photo, or just a Facebook help message. 
There are other buttons on the top of the page we should briefly cover. At the top left hand corner, there are options that say page, messages, notifications, etc. Take those as you see them. If it says messages, it means if you click that button, your messages will show. If you click on notifications, all of your notifications will pop up. Same with insights and publishing tools. If you click insights, after a week of collected data, you will see how your post, photos, and other things are doing, how many people open a post, how many people like a photo, and etc. Let's discuss what the top right buttons do. The one that has your name by it, when clicked, will take you to your personal account. The home button will take you to the home page. The home page will show you all of the posts, photos, etc. of the people you follow post. If nothing is there right now, it means you are not following anyone or anything yet. At the top right hand corner, there is a search bar. Go ahead and search Texas VFW. Select the department's page. Under the cover photo, you will see some buttons that say like, follow, or share. Click the like button. Now that you like the page and are following the department's page, you can also share the department's page on your timeline or other options. Click the share button and before you go ahead and post it, change the audience to whom you will share it with. Select the down arrow of the friends button and switch it to public. Then click the post button. Let's learn how to comment or tag in a post. You can scroll down the Texas VFW timeline and select a photo or post you want to be part of. You also have the option to like, comment, or share. If you want to comment on it, click the comment option and start writing. If you want to tag something or someone, type in an at sign and without spaces, type in a name or a page. Then hit the enter button on your keyboard when you are satisfied with your comment. If you post a comment and want to delete or edit it, select the drop down arrow beside your comment and select the one that you would like to do. Since we just followed and shared Texas VFW's page, let's check out what our homepage looks like now. Now let's finish up with other buttons at the top right hand corner. The button Find Friends takes you to a page where you can search for your friends by name and more. Once you find that person you are looking for, click the Add Friend button. Other people can send you a friend request too. Remember those red numbers we talked about earlier? If you look at the two people icon at the top right hand corner, that is where you will accept or decline friend request. Beside that button is a comment bubble icon with a lightning bolt in it. This is your messages button. If you click on this button, you can see all your messages and you have the option to create and send a message. When you click new messages, this is how your new message looks like. Enter and select a name in the to section and then click and type your message at the bottom of the new message window. The last button on the top right corner I will talk about is the world icon. This is also another way to get your notifications. Let's go back to your poster district page. If you notice at the left side of the screen, you have the word shortcuts. Underneath of that is your page. Click that to get back to your page. The last thing I will talk about for Facebook today is photos and videos. At the left hand side of the screen, click the photos button. Let's create a photo album. Click the box with the plus sign in it. Locate and select the photos you want to add to your album. Title the album and write a description if you wish. Select the high quality option. When all the photos have downloaded, click the post button at the bottom right hand corner. If you would like to tag someone in the photo, click the photo, hover over a face, and type in that person or organization's name. Select it or hit enter on your keyboard. To exit out of the theater window, click the X button at the top right hand corner. You can edit your album by clicking the edit button. If you're looking to upload a video, on the left hand side of the screen, select the videos option. Click add video, then locate and select your video. Then click the open button. Allow it to load, give it a title if you wish, then select a publish option. If you want to view your photos or videos, they will be located on your home timeline and under the photos and videos tabs. One thing I get asked is, 
What if someone has already created a page for the poster district, but they are no longer available and now no one has access to it or a similar circumstance like that? If you cannot get that person to add you on as a page admin or you can't get a hold of them at all, go to the previous post page and on their cover photo, it has a dot 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 button. Select that button, click on report, then select recover or close this account and then go on from there. There was so much more to Facebook that I couldn't cover today, but I believe I covered enough to get you started. I'm available for questions. 512-834-8535 at extension 107. Aaron at texasvfw.org or just ask me in person. How to create a Twitter page. Open a web browser and type in the URL twitter.com. At the top right hand corner, select the sign up button where it says full name, type in VFW post and then your number or Texas VFW district and then your number. Example, Texas VFW district 11. Then enter in your email and password. Click the sign up button. You may add in your phone number or hit the blue skip button below the next button. Now choose your username. You can change it later, but for now keep it consistent with what you put as your Facebook page. I am making mine TVFW District 11. Click the next button. Click the let's go button. You can click on some of your interests as a post or district now. Some things may be government and politics, so you can stay up to date on news that could affect veterans. You can type into your search the word veterans, whatever is relevant to the post district or VFW. Click the continue button at the top right. You can now find friends through your email accounts and select import contacts, or you can select no thanks option and do this later. The next step will offer suggestions of who they think you would be interested in following. You can accept or uncheck the suggestions, then hit the follow and continue button. Select the turn on notifications button or leave it alone, whatever you prefer. Hit the continue button. Twitter is very user friendly and takes you through each button. Welcome home. This timeline is where you'll spend most of your time getting instant updates about what matters to you. Join the conversation. With the comment bubble icon, you can add your thoughts about any tweet with a reply. Find a topic you're passionate about and jump right in. Spread the word. The recycle looking icon is called a retweet. It is the fastest way to share someone else's tweet with your followers. Tap the icon to send it instantly. Say a lot with a little. When you see a tweet you love, tap the heart. It lets the person who wrote it know that you shared the love. A message will appear at the top of your screen asking to go to your email and click on the email message from Twitter and confirm your email address. Go ahead and do that. Now let's customize your Twitter account. In the top right hand corner of the screen, there is a profile icon. Click on that icon, then select a profile. Now, just like Facebook, Twitter has a profile photo and a cover or what they like to call a header photo. You can customize. Click on the camera icon of the profile photo section. Select upload a photo. Locate and select a photo that represents your poster district. Click the open button. Use the sliders to resize your selected photo if necessary. Then click apply. Follow the same steps with selecting a header photo. Reposition and scale the header photo to your preferences, then click apply. On the left, write the bio for your poster district, the location of your poster district. Add a poster district website, and if there isn't one, put in the department websites, texasvfw.org. Then you can choose a theme caller. After you are finished writing the information, click the Save Changes button on the right. Now you are ready to tweet. You have 140 characters to get your message across, so use your words wisely. 
In the box that says what's happening is where you click and start typing. You can write anything from promoting a post or district event to promoting VFW programs and goals. After you are finished writing your message, you have the option of adding some other elements to your tweet. You can add a photo, a GIF, or other elements. When you are satisfied with your tweet, click the Tweet button. Nice one. All the tweets you write appear on your profile page. Your tweets also appear on your home timeline as well as the home timelines of people who follow you. Now let's talk about the top bar. The home tab brings you to the original screen you entered on. Everything you see here are the tweets of the people and organizations you followed. Also, they have suggestions of more people you can follow, and you have followed them by simply clicking the follow button. Also on this page is a list of what topics or people are trending. If you want to be part of a trending conversation, click on one of the bold lines and see what the hype is about, or you can use one of the hashtags that are listed. The button beside home is moments. If you click on this, it will take you to a page that shows highlights of current events. They also have subtabs where you can narrow the events down you see by today, news, sports, entertainment, and fun. Beside the moments tab is notifications. If you click this, it will show you all the notifications that you have of people who mentioned you with a tag, those who reply to a tweet, retweet at you, or those who recently followed you. The next tab is named Messages, and just like the name, if you click on this tab, it allows you to view the messages you've received, messages you've sent, and allows you to write a message. To write a message, click the Start a Conversation button. Then in the Send Messages to space, enter in a name and click the correct person or organization. Click the Next button, then start typing your message. You can add a GIF or a photo, and then when everything looks correct, hit the send button. If you don't want to be part of the conversation anymore, there is a dot 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 icon at the top, and if you click that, there are options where you can mute notifications, leave the conversation, or report a person if they have made a reportable comment. Press the X to exit out of the message window. Feel free to use the search bar to search for people or companies or topics. Now let's see more options under the tiny profile pic in the top right hand corner. If you click on that icon, a list shows. If you click on list, the page shows if you are subscribed to a list or if you are a member of anything. Under the same tiny profile pic menu is an analytics tab. If you select the turn on analytics button, you can measure and boost your impact on Twitter. Return to your original Twitter page. Under the same menu with the tiny profile pic, select Settings and Privacy. On this page is a load of options where you can customize your Twitter page to your post or district's likings. I would like to point out how to change your password. On the left-hand menu, click the Password tab, and this is the place where you can do that. Under Password, click on Mobile. You can link this account to mobile phone so you can access your Twitter account from anywhere your phone is. If you would like to invite your friends to your Twitter page, you may do so with the Find Friends tab. You can use your email accounts to search for people. That concludes the training on Twitter. How to create an Instagram account. Type Instagram.com into the browser. Continue the process by typing in your information and filling in the blanks, or you can log in with Facebook. For this video, I will fill in the blanks. Type in your email address, your name, post, or district, and then create a username. It is important to stay consistent with your usernames from your other social media accounts. For example, if I was doing this for my district, I would type in TVFW District 11, no spaces. And if you receive a check mark, that means the username is available. Create a password for your account and click sign up. At the top of the page, it says add a profile photo. So let's do that. Click the plus sign, locate and select a photo that represents your post or district. Try to keep the photos the same as your other social media accounts. Then click open. Underneath the profile photo is suggestions of people you can follow. 
Note, if it has a blue check mark beside the name, it means that that person or company is Instagram certified. Basically, it is for the rich and famous, saying that it is the actual official or personal page of the rich and famous. If you don't see anyone or any company that you want to follow, you can use the search bar located at the top middle of the page or the compass icon located at the top right hand side of the page. Let us use the search bar. Type in VFW HQ. Either select from the list or hit enter to follow National VFW. Click the follow button. The button beside the compass is a heart. It is like the notification section of Instagram. Anytime a person likes a photo or comments on a photo, a red dot will appear under the heart. Click that, it will take you to a page that shows recent activity on your post. When someone comments on or likes one of your photos or videos, you'll see it here. The person icon is a button to your profile page. On this page, you will see all of your Instagram posts. It shows the number of posts you have, the number of followers, and the number of profiles you are following. If you click on the edit profile page, you can type in your post district or department website, a description of your post or district. If you can't think of anything, you can copy and paste your information off of texasvfw.org. It is best if you enter a phone number because you can only post photos from your phone. You can select a gender if you want, leave the check marked on similar account suggestions, then click the submit button. You can also change your password on this page. At the top left, there is an Instagram logo mark and logo type. Now, if you click that, it'll take you to the home screen where you can see the post of the people you follow. When you see a post that you want to be a part of, you can do two things. You can like the post by clicking the heart, or you can comment on the post by clicking the comment bubble icon, then type your message, and hit enter on your keyboard. You are really only supposed to upload photos from a phone, so here are some screenshots of what the phone version looks like. Here is the profile page. At the bottom of the page, there is a home menu, and that takes you to the home page. There is a search icon, an add icon, the heart for notifications, and your profile pic that takes you back to your page. The add icon, when selected, will pull up a screen that has a list of your photos that you took on your phone. Select the photo you want to upload. You can edit the photo if you would like to and put a filter on it or crop it. Then you can type in a description. Make sure you include hashtags so you can be part of the conversation. Then click share. This concludes the Instagram training. In the standard operating procedures for BPRs, it states, you must provide photographic documentation of post members conducting or participating in the project. It is definitely more interesting when we get a photo of a post member or members interacting with someone from the community while conducting the VPR versus a group of members at their post home quickly snapping a photo after their monthly meeting. The rule says conducting or participating in the event, so photos taken during the VPR event are better than taking a group photo at the end that has a sign in it. Event must be documented by photographs. Notice the word photographs. It is plural. Don't take the risk of just taking one photo. The photo could turn out blurred, dark, or not meeting the VPR photo requirements. And if you are only taking one and it does turn out to be messed up, it is possible that your post will not receive full credit for that VPR. Pictures must show VFW members wearing VFW regalia in the form of VFW hats, caps, shirts, jackets, banners that say VFW, etc. Ensure the post members are wearing VFW gear while participating in the event. Many people, when looking at a publication, will only scan through the photos. If there is no VFW signifier anywhere, it is a missed opportunity to make people more familiar with the VFW. Events should not be combined together into one dual purpose ceremony. Please do not hold multiple VPRs in the same sitting. 
The purpose of a VPR is to appropriately commemorate these patriotic days, to get out in the community and spread Americanism, to let people know our presence, the VFW mission and voice. It is not right to not properly recognize these days. Not properly recognizing these days would take away our strong presence in our local communities take away knowledge of patriotic days in our communities, take away the honor each day represents, and keep our doors shut to potential new members and supporters. Now, you may be surprised that some post members think that coming together for one evening and taking photos for all of the VPR events that are supposed to be spread out throughout the year is okay, but it is not. And it is very obvious when members attempt to get all their VPRs done in one sitting, and this behavior will not be accepted. So an overview would be at least one photo, at least one VFW member in the photo, a VFW signifier such as a VFW cap, VFW logo, etc. showing in the photo. The photo must be taken at the VPR event. The member or members in the photo must be conducting or participating in the VPR event. And do not conduct a dual purpose ceremony. Submitting VPRs. The preferred way to submit VPRs is through our website, texasvfw.org. Open up a web browser, type in texasvfw.org in the URL space and click the top right hand button that reads Submit VPRs. You can also locate the VPR form under the Admin tab. Once you are at the VPR form, start filling out and selecting your information in the spaces provided. Any wording with a red asterisk beside it means that that information is required and the form will not be successfully submitted until that information is correct or filled in. When you come to uploading your photos, you can either click the Add Files button or drag and drop your photos in the window. It is very important that you select the Upload button before you click on the Submit button at the bottom of your form. Once everything is filled out and uploaded properly, hit the Submit button. Once your form and photos are successfully submitted, a message that says your message has been sent to submit another VPR, refresh the page. Another thing that will happen is a copy of your submission will go to the email you provided on the your email space. Please keep this file for your records. If you cannot locate the copy of your submission in your inbox, please check the junk or spam folders in your email. You can also type in VPR in the search bar to find the email. If you still cannot find the email, perhaps the email was entered incorrectly on the VPR form, and you should contact me at erin at texasvfw.org. Also, you may email me your VPR photos and caption information if the online form is temporarily not working. The Report Community Service button is also located at the top right-hand corner and under the Admin tab. The online form is very similar to the VPR form. All you have to do is properly fill out and select the information that is relevant to your community service project. You can upload a photo of the project. One thing that is different than the VPR form is that a photo is not required. Although it is appreciated and more than likely used to promote the VFW. After the form is filled out successfully, click the submit button at the bottom of the form. One of the good things about the online submission forms is that you can fill it out and submit it straight from your phone. Use the same steps that you would use on a desktop computer to complete the form. The only differences are it is a phone and not a desktop. You locate the form only from under the admin tab on the website. And you locate your photos on your phone's photo album, not a folder from your desktop. 
The last desired option is the snail mail route. If you can't seem to get the online form to work and can't seem to get your email to work, you may submit your VPRs and your community service through the mail. To do this, you will need to acquire a current VPR form, either print it from our website or make a copy from the standard operating procedures. Fill out the form, print the photos from the event, place them in an envelope addressed to Texas VFW PO Box 14468, Austin, Texas 78761. And around a week or two later, we will get your submissions. Magazine Photo Selection I have recently been asked about how posts can have better chances of getting their photo in the magazine. First, we start off with the basic requirements that follow the VPR guidelines, such as there has to be a VFW member in the photo and a VFW signifier. However, if everyone is completing their VPRs properly, this requirement should cover every photo that is submitted. So how do we narrow down the selection? If it meets those requirements, the next stipulation is the photo content. The purpose of the magazine is to showcase what the VFW does. An example would be, it is more likely that we would select a photo of a VFW member who is completing an action with a member of the community versus a group of members holding a whiteboard or printout sign. Let's face it, nobody really cares about a group of people holding a piece of paper. It is way more interesting if a story can be told just by the photo content alone. Also, we do not promote other businesses or products. For example, if there's a big neon Budweiser sign in the background of the photo, chances are we will not select that photo. The next condition is space. Space is limited. We have one to two pages to cover a VPR. That's about three to 10 photos per VPR. With over 300 posts submitting photos for that same event, the page fills up fast. So my advice is do not wait until a month after the VPR event to turn in your report form and photos because by that time, it is likely that the page is already full. So turn in your photos promptly. Another way to narrow down to the most ideal photos for each page is dependent on the photo quality and size. We will select photos that are good quality versus photos of lower quality. Examples of low quality photos are blurry, low light, and pixelated due to the small file size. Examples of high quality photos are photos that are in focus and photos that have good lighting and etc. It is important to take good photographs, not only so you can share them with your post members and on your website and social media pages, but so department can share the Texas VFW voice on a larger scale through the magazine, their social media and other sources. The magazine staff includes myself as the layout and graphic designer, past state commander Dan West as the assistant editor, and state adjutant quartermaster Roy Grona as the editor. All photos that are published are selected and approved by the magazine staff.